shining a light on podcasts and videos that have caught our attention. The Spotlight with Jen Spiker. Weekdays on Vision and on demand in the free Vision Christian Media app. A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, let's return to a conversation about Indonesia, our near neighbours to the north, with a huge population, 270 million Indonesians, just, you could just say, a stone's throw away. And out of that 270 million, 29 million Christian believers. Now, it's a challenging place because it's primarily a Muslim nation, but with a number of believers that big, you might appreciate that the church is quite significant. And if you've ever made a donation to Vision at a time of a Visionathon, or you might be a contributor through the word for today, you might be impressed to know that some of the dollars that you have made as a donation are being a blessing right now to people in Indonesia. Our wonderful opportunity to welcome back to 2020, Paulus Wiratno. He's founder of Dian Mandiri Radio Network and back with us today, Paulus. Welcome along. Thank you for having me again. Paulus, when we talk about the sort of ministry that you have, and we were talking to you just recently, I wonder whether you've got any thoughts on this connection between Australian believers and the good work that you're doing, uh, perhaps via the, the publication called The Word for Today. Yes, we are so grateful for uh, Vision Radio that distributed or gave us this uh, uh, word for today and uh, I distributed that just for example last Christmas to uh, people who live in a prison the Krobokan prison in Bali so almost every year we give that for the prisoners and they are so grateful many of the prisoners they use that devotion for cell group meeting inside the prison and also we uh, give that uh, devotion or word for today uh, for people in the government, not only a Christian in the church, but last Christmas we gave to more than 500 uh, the, the bank staff. The, you know, we, we had a Christmas with uh, all the bank staff from different bank in Denpasar, and we gave away. And for listeners, when you hear that name, Korobakan Prison in Bali, uh, it's a notorious prison, isn't it? Because there's been some Australian connections there. And I know that some listeners will remember the name Andrew Chan, who was on death row and was executed in Korobakan Prison. You, in fact, had some connections to Andrew Chan. Yes. Uh, again, it's by court appointment. Two weeks after they caught in Indonesia, they put in a, like a police station. Uh, Mel Fibri, the leader of uh, Teen Challenge Australia, called me, Paulos, please visit Andrew Chan and Miran. So straight away, I went to meet them. And every time on Wednesday, I come to the prison, I bring a cheeseburger and Coke for them. <laughs> and that's the beginning of knowing them and discipling and praying for them. And uh, I was surprised that the relationship growing very good. When Andrew become the priest in the prison, sometime Andrew will text me, I want to preach on Sunday. Do you have anything you want to share with me? I want to preach for the people in the prison. So we have a good relationship with Andrew Chan, actually. And such a beautiful relationship that developed. And with his discipleship, as you say, uh, came to Christ in Korobakan prison and became a leader of a group of prisoners there. And from what I understand, more than a 100 prisoners actually baptised, so becoming believers in Christ and then baptised because of his testimony, because of his leadership and because he was so captivated by this gospel. Yes, not many people know that Andrew Chan baptised 106 people inside Korobakan prison and one of them is... The imam, the imam in the mosque, in the prison. And Andrew Chan gave him a New Testament. And that imam uh, finally found Jesus. He gave his life to Jesus. He got beaten by their friend and they moved to the Christian block. And now this man who already the follower of Christ, he go to every village, spread the good news 
and a lot of people got baptized. Just last year, his group baptized 850 people. Wow. Uh, All from the gospel being shared uh, with Andrew Chan. And on death row in Korobakan prison, of course, Andrew Chan was executed. And, of course, that was national headlines here in Australia. The radio ministry that you founded, and uh, last time we were talking, we were talking about just how revelation from God came to you to start a radio ministry. And you founded Dian Mandiri Radio Network, and it's one of the affiliates of UCB Asia Pacific. So Aussies have a direct connection to it. And it's been running for many years now. And there's some tremendous stories out of that too. In fact, you had one man who came to Christ listening who eventually became a pastor. Yes, let me say thank you first to UCB Australia and also Vision that support us. You help us not only with the training, but also the networking enhance our ministry in radio ministry. But this is the good testimony. Just happened last October. I was in uh, Rote Island and uh, going to Rote Island, I need to take uh, like a ferry and uh, somebody recognized my voice and said, are you Pastor Paulus? We have... uh, we we listen to your message every morning for 16 years. And then I preach in one local church. After that, somebody came to me saying, I want to take picture with you, Pastor Palos. And then he gave this testimony. When I was six years old, I listened to your voice through uh, a radio. And that time I decided I want to become a pastor like you. I was six years old at that time. Pastor Palos, now I'm a pastor in a church. Thank you very much for your radio ministry. You've got some wonderful things that go hand in hand uh, with the radio ministry. Dian Mandiri, the radio network, you've got 54 stations there. You've also started uh, fabulous orphanages and you're caring for uh, a retire. You've got a retirement village for pastors. Uh, is it difficult for Christian pastors in Indonesia to actually be cared for in their retirement? Is that why there's a need there for that? Oh, this is something that really moved my heart. Every time I travel to island or remote places and I met pastors, sorry of saying this, their house is like a chicken heart. Most of the pastors, they don't have uh, financial planning, they don't have a retirement planning. So when they stop ministering, nothing. And I met some of them already suffering in his old age. As a pastor, they're supposed to receive a good life after spending time in ministry. Like Pastor Jacobus, I met him for uh, several times and I was asked to come to his house. Man, it moved my heart. I was in tears when I said, how long you have been in ministry? 36 years. And I went to the bedroom, not even mattress. And I said, Pastor Jacobus, I want to help you. I want to help you. So we built a house for Pastor Jacobus after that. But there are only one among thousands of the pastors who have no like a retirement plan or pension. So that's why we have a heart to start Retirement Village for pastors. And I know there'll be some listeners who have a real heart for Indonesia and a real appreciation for the difficulties in some places in Indonesia where it's very difficult being a Christian, being a pastor. Yeah. And if you think that's a, a fast road to riches, as you can hear our special guest Paulus say, it's very difficult for pastors in Indonesia. And so even having a special retirement village for pastors might seem a little unusual here, but it certainly is the reality in Indonesia. Hey, your radio network, Dian Mandiri, 54 stations in that network, and you're a part of an even larger network of Christian ministry stations called Japri. How does that work? Yeah, uh, Japri is trying to uh, help Station, especially station in the island who are struggling. And by becoming a member of association, we will help them, uh, not only technical help, but also like uh, linking with the resources so that we can help financially uh, with our network in different places. And also, we are trying to equip them so we can become a better broadcaster or better radio station.
Let me ask you something that may be sensitive. Yeah. Uh, you've got a new president in Indonesia, and things have not been easy for Christians in Indonesia. How does the future look under the new president? Prayer. We need prayer because we don't know the the future of our government. But uh, you can sense that now, that the confusion happening and pro and contra is happening. We don't want any uh, riots or any problem in the future. So we, even among the Christian in Indonesia, we pray for peace for Indonesia. So please continue to pray for Indonesia. And I mentioned the number 29 million who would align themselves with Christian faith in Indonesia. Uh, the days ahead, are you anticipating continued growth of that number? How do you see things? Brother, crisis is always the best, what do you call it, the best media for the gospel. So in the crisis, we see a lot of miracle. People People open their heart. So pray for harvest. Crisis is a good time for harvest. So this is my problem right now. We need more people to go win the laws, disciple the people, pray for Indonesia. And I imagine if we're talking to Australian listeners, it's not necessarily come and visit Indonesia to help, but be prayerful, yeah. be a financial contributor yeah. to try and make those things happen that will bring some growth to the church in Indonesia. For sure, yeah. We need your prayer, we need your support, and together we will accomplish more. Now, you are the host of a podcast, been going for many, many years. It's called Making Life Better. It's in Indonesian language. Do yeah. you do any in English language? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, but there might be a demand, you never Maybe know. Maybe one day. Yeah. So for listeners who want to access that podcast, uh, try your favorite podcast platform and yeah. search for Making Life Better with Paulus Wiratno, W-I-R-A-T-N-O. Uh, Paulus is the founder of the DN Mandiri Radio Network, 54 stations in that network. You might want to Google DN Mandiri too, and that's in Indonesian language as well. We mentioned that this is an affiliate of UCB Asia Pacific. So for listeners to this conversation now, if you've ever made a donation, something of your donation, a small percentage of that is going towards support for Indonesian people and uh, the latest 30,000 copies of The Word for Today is just evidence of how you're making a difference when you support the work of Vision Christian Media too. Paulus, thank you so much for sharing your heart with us once again today on 2020. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.